In this How to Svelte, we're going to make some flashcards based off of this 3D flip box effect that's at W3 Schools in their How To section. Just go to the flip box link there, and you can see on hover, you've got these two options. We'll go ahead and use this horizontal flip. And studying the code, there's, you know, you see HTML and CSS, but there is no JavaScript involved in this. So we're going to incorporate some JavaScript here using Svelte. And instead of on hover, what we'll do is we'll provide a, a click event and we'll click a button of sorts and that will trigger the horizontal flip. And just to give you a sense of what that looks like. So we'll click the button. We can advance to the next vocabulary. And this is a flashcard exercise, but I mean, you could even use it for an About Us page um, where everyone has their picture here and you click a button, then you get their information with a contact button. But we'll focus on flashcards today. But the idea is the same. You can still go back to W3Schools, grab the HTML, which we'll go ahead and do now. We'll paste it inside our Svelte REPL. And so when we hover over the div, it flips over. And so our first task here is to find out what causes the flip. And it's on hover, so let's just take a look at the CSS. And here's a hover pseudo class. And when we hover over the flip box, then it's this class here, flip box enter. So it's this div right here. So what we're going to do is we'll take the same rule, the same CSS rule that they've created. And instead of that name, we'll call it flip it. So now if I apply the flip it rule to flip box enter, you can see it, it goes to the back side. So this is the div that we have to target, and this is the class that we have to add. But we're going to add it dynamically. And so in Svelte, what we can do is use class, colon, and then the name of the class, and then have it add that class only when this condition is true. And so let's go ahead and create a Boolean up here. And we'll put this variable in here. So when show card back is true, it'll add this flip class to it. Now, right now it's false, which is why we can see the front. But if we do the back, if we do true, then it shows the back side. And so we have that working now. So what we want to do is add something that we can click on that will then flip this Boolean to true or back to false again. So let's go ahead and add a button. And so we have our button here. Let's go ahead and add an on click. And we'll call a function called toggle show back, which we'll go ahead and make now. And its job is to take show back, show card back, and assign it to whatever it's the opposite of its current value. So right now the current value is false. So if I click this, it sets it to true. And setting it to true then adds this flip it class. Now, if I click it again, it'll set it back to false and it removes the flip it class. Now, the other thing we can do inside of our button is uh, we can toggle the text content that gets shown and we can base that off of show card back. So let's put some svelte curly braces here and we'll say if show card back is true, then change the text content to show front. 
else show back. That becomes true, and then show front shows. Click it again. This value is now false, so it shows show back. Let me go ahead and add a little bit of CSS for this too. Now I'm going to add some content so that we can see the flashcard clue on the front as well as the word on the back side. So the picture will be on the front, and when we click, we'll see a word, a vocabulary word there. So I'm going to add another file called vocab data, and I'm going to save it as a JS file. And so this is an array of objects, and each object has a word, which is a string, and an image, which is also a string, but it's a string that is a URL to an image on the web. So let's go ahead and export this array, and then we'll import it into app. And then what we'll do is now we'll alter the HTML that they've given us. And so the two most important parts for us right now are this front side and this back side. Now the front side is going to have an image. It's not going to have text. So let's go ahead and add a div parent with an image child element. And so what we're going to do is for the source attribute, that will be the image. And then for this text content, we'll call this answer. And we'll call this clue. And then the alt text can be the same as the answer. And so we need to make these variables up here. Then the other variable that we need to make is going to be an index. So we'll call this flashcard index, and we'll set it to zero. And what this will do is this will be connected to our indices of our array here. So whenever we're showing zero, then we're showing this image with this word. This will be indice one, two, three, etc. So then what we'll do is we'll make answer and clue be reactive. Well, let's work with clue first. Clue will be this vocabulary array. And we'll access by index, whatever flashcard index is assigned to. And then we'll do dot image. And we're doing dot image because that's the name of the key here. So we can just copy this and answer will be instead of image, it'll be word. Okay, good. So we got an image to show up. Let's go ahead and add a little bit of CSS to control that. Okay, great. So we can see this image because we're using uh, this felt variable clue which is reactive, and it's changing based on this flashcard index. So if I chase, change the flashcard index to 1, then it changes to the next image, 2, etc. Let me go ahead and clean up uh, this a little bit. I'll add some other HTML and CSS. So now when we click on the Show Back button, we can actually see the word on the back with the image on the front. Now let's go ahead and add a forward button and a back button so that will allow us to click through the images. And so we're going to want to add some on-click event listeners. And this button will be to go to the previous card. So we'll call this event handler function previous card. And then for the next arrow, we'll call this next card. Let's go ahead and create these functions. And previous card 
wants to take this index and decrement it by one. And then the next card function wants to take the flashcard index and increment it by one. So now if we click the next card button, and we click the back, the previous card button. Now the thing we have to handle now are the exceptions. So this is the first image. Now if I click back again, it should take me to the very last image of this array, but it won't do that. So we'll have to add a little bit more code in here to do that. So now if I try it, it'll go back to the last element in the array, and that's what vocab length minus one means. It's always the last element in an array. So let's handle the next card. Good, so let's go all the way to the end. And now we're at the end, and now the very next click should set it to index zero. Good, so now we can go back and forth. And you can see when I click the next arrow, it still shows the vocabulary word. So let's go ahead on the previous card, then the next card, event handler, let's automatically set show card back to false no matter what. That way it flips it back to the picture every time. So that way if you're testing yourself, all you have to do is, it, so you look at the picture, you say Christmas tree, oh, I got the right answer. Now I want to go to the next one, and when I click that, it automatically flips it back so you can see the next clue to give the next answer. Now the only problem is you can see the word. So if I show the back here, if I click the next, you'll be able to see the, the answer for the next card. So why don't we solve that by taking the, the word here, taking the text color and making it the same color as the background. And so now the text is the same color as the background, so we can't see it now. But what we'll do is we'll fade it in. So when we see the answer and we click the next arrow, it'll immediately turn to this olive green. And while we're looking at the image, it will slowly be fading to white in the background. Okay, so I have a class here called Conceal Answer. And what it does is it uses this animation reveal text slowly and what that does is it changes the current color this is the current color that olive green and it'll turn it to white and i'll do that over uh, a period of time and that will just help conceal the answer but the thing is is we need to add this class to the back of the card so let's see where that's at so it's where the answer is here so let's add class, colon, the name of the class, which is called conceal answer. And we want to add conceal answer when show card back is true. Okay, so now when we see the back, we can see Christmas tree. Now, as soon as I click this, this class will get added. And we can't see what the next answer is because it turns it that olive green. Now if I click that, you can see that it came back in. So it's just enough of a trick that it helps us to conceal the answer. Good. Now let's go ahead and uh, quickly break this into a flashcard component so we can get some practice doing that. And we'll go ahead and move over this HTML, the front and the back. And I'll move over the CSS as well. And then we'll need to make these props here. And we're going to pass them up to the parent app. So let's export them.
and then we'll import the flashcard component. So we can see the background. Now what we, we need to do is pass the props through. So we've got show card back, clue, and answer. Good, everything looks like it, it's working fine. Now again, this is just, you know, this kind of vocabulary. You could, of course, make it anything you want. If I come back to the the data object, I could remove this and and add some other kind of vocabulary. So, you know, you just make it whatever you want, whatever the content you want. There's always a picture on one side and a word on the other side. And of course, you can also replace the image with vocabulary. So this could be perhaps a Spanish word, and then you show the back, and then it shows the English word. Okay, and this is how you can make a simple flashcard app using a flip card effect with Svelte.